What is going on you guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video we're gonna create another music video effect using LumaFusion and Affinity Photo. Now let's take a look at what we're gonna create in today's tutorial. Did it feel like I'm floating, but I'm falling with both eyes closed when I let the world spin. Testing the water, she got my nurse tense. Back when I ain't even have a purpose, I was so eager to learn some things. Now before we head over to the iPad, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. If you want to see more future videos like this, also leave a like for the algorithm. Push the notification bell if you want to be the first in the comment section as well. Now without further ado, let's head over to the iPad. So once we get over to LumaFusion, we're going to start by placing the playhead at the exact placement or where we want to take a snapshot and apply the effect. So in this case, that will be right here. Now once we have the marker in place, we're going to move over and take a snapshot, which we're going to import over to Affinity Photo. Once we take in the snapshot, we're going to move over to Affinity Photo and we're going to go to the top right corner and we're going to tap on the plus. Once we tapped on the plus, we're going to move over to import from photos and we're going to import the newly rendered photo, which we took in LumaFusion. Fusion. Now the good thing about this transition is that we only have to apply the mask one time in Affinity Photo to get the images we need to make this transition. Now like I said in the previous video, I always make a duplicate of the image just in case I mess up the first mask, I have easy access to the next one. Now once we made a duplicate, we're gonna move over to the selection tool and for this one, we could use a freehand and then adjust later on, but we're actually gonna use the smart selection brush for this example, which is also doing a very impressive job. Now it's really important that you be precise with the masking for the best possible result when we're gonna create this transition in LumaFusion later on. Now once your masking is complete, we're gonna move over and tap on the refine button which is down here. So as we can see right away, there is not much we need to do to correct this image. So we can move straight over to the output and choose new layer with mask. So as you can see, that removes the entire background and we only have the part of the photo which we want to work with. Now the next step is to save this by going over to export share and then save image. Now once the image is saved, I like to go back to the Photos app just to see if the image actually got saved. In some cases, I have experienced that the image doesn't get saved and I will have to redo the entire process over. Now in this case, it got saved right away so we can go back to Affinity Photo. Here is the trick. Once we're inside of Affinity Photo now, we're gonna go over to the button which is all the way on the bottom here, which is the History button. And if we go one up from the bottom, it will take us back to the mask that we created earlier. Now here you have two different options. You can either tap hold on the mask itself and then choose the delete or you can go over to the uh, refine button which is here and then tap hold again and choose invert mask. These are the two options that you have and uh, whether you select the one or the other it's all up to you but that will leave your image with the transparency exactly where we created the mask. So in this case you can see that we removed the gorilla now and we have that as a transparent background right at that spot. Now this is the way that we need to do it to create this effect. Now once we've done that, we can save this as an image as well. And once the image is saved, we can also double check that in the Photos app. But once it's saved, we're gonna move over to Luma Fusion. Now once we get over to LumaFusion, we're going to import both of the clips to our timeline. And in this case, we need to have the uh, uh, photo which does not contain the gorilla on top of the gorilla. And the reason for that is if we go over and if we check uh, the placement of the gorilla, if we go into edit and then uh, change the placement of it, you can see that this is now being on top of the image itself and it's just being 
placed around the image, right? So there's no cool effect to this. The only thing we've done is to mask it out, but you can use this to create other types of music video effects as well, where you maybe have the logo or the brand or whatever, uh, shirt, anything coming in from the side uh, instead of having it, like we're gonna do it in this tutorial. But anyway, we're gonna have the um, clip of the shirt is gonna be on top and we're gonna have the gorilla on the bottom. And once we place the layers correctly, we can also do a playback just to get the feel of where we want the transition to start. If you wanted to start from the beginning, you can go over and you can start creating the keyframes from the beginning of the clip. But in this case, we're gonna go a little bit further into the clip. Now, once we have the location of where we want to start the animation, we're gonna go into edit on the uh, gorilla itself or the logo, whatever you decide to uh, animate and to mask out. Now, once we get into edit and over to frame and fit, we're gonna make a keyframe exactly where the playhead uh, is standing. And this is gonna be the same position and we're gonna go one or two frames. It all depends on how fast you want the animation to, uh, to go. But in this case, we're gonna go two frames frames. Now once we get to the second frame we can add a slight rotation to it and we can also push it a little bit down and uh, we're gonna move two more frames and then we're gonna do the exact same thing for every keyframe that we create. So we're gonna make a slight rotation and then we're gonna pull it down until it's out of the frame. Now, if we go back out to the timeline, we can take a look at what we just created with the keyframes and how it looks when we do a playback. So here you can see the animation of what we just created where the gorilla is actually disappearing within the shirt. Now, once we're happy with the first animation, we're gonna move over to the second clip where we're gonna create a zoom in effect. Now, once we created a zoom in effect, we're gonna apply another video file underneath these two layers. So this will zoom into another one. So what we're gonna do now is to go to the point right before the gorilla is disappearing within uh, the transparent uh, mask here. And we're gonna go into edit on the top clip. We're gonna create our first keyframe right there, which is gonna be static. It's not gonna be any movement to it, but this is the place where the animation will start. So once we created that, we can go frame by frame or we can go two frames at a time in this case, I'm going one frame at a time and I'm doing slightly harder zooms or scale changes as I get closer to the end of the clip. Now, once you're happy with the second animation, you're basically done with the entire effect. The only thing that's left is to place another clip underneath these two layers. Now, once you've done that, you will have an effect that looks like this. A short bike ride to the crib, using no hands, oh, did it feel like I'm floating? But I'm falling with both eyes closed when I let the rust spin. Testing the water, she got my nurse tense. Back when I ain't even have a pipe. So there you have another awesome masking effect which you can use for your future videos. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the transition itself and what you want to see in the future. Also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram to get an early peek on what's coming to the channel as well. So with that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.